one twenty a.m. on July first, twenty twenty, and I was uh, looking up a documentary that apparently was made um, about the cabinet of uh, President William Howard Taft. And when I was looking through the user agreement on the website that featured it, first of all, they just updated their terms today. Um, the, I'm sorry, yesterday, June 30th. Okay, so that's exciting on one hand. And then they had another page about uh, user terms because you know there's more than one page of terms and privacy agreements. It was updated on May 27th, 2020 which apparently is 20 days after a report that the Department of Homeland Security was going to be moving its biometric account database over to Amazon Cloud. So it announced this on May 7th and exactly 20 days later, an affiliate of Amazon is discussing updates to its privacy policies. See, I've seen this before in the national security strategy. I've also been tracking it as a part of a <clears throat> pattern of racketeering activity. And when you talk about recalibrating risk weights, one of the things that ends up happening is uh, a refusal to address the criminal implications of allowing risk weighting that has uh, some sort of terminating hedge option that literally results in somebody's execution. But perhaps the most glaring thing is that this particular company that's an affiliate of Amazon has a program, a prime video content program. Apparently, contract negotiations in the age of leather were different than contract negotiations in the age of PVC. And I'm looking right now on uh, the website for the Government Accountability Office. And one of the things I'm seeing is on page two of a GAO report dated for April 23rd, there is a hack in the page. There is a problem with the formatting. And the problem with the formatting in this report is identical to the problem with the formatting in the PVC user agreement for Amazon. And this is a GAO report that is um, dated for April 23rd regarding open, oh sorry, priority open recommendations. Department of Homeland Security. And the hack is under emergency preparedness and response. Now you could say it's not exactly, it is actually first paragraph, second paragraph, no space between the two paragraphs, space between the second and third paragraph, space between the other ones. Then right here, I'm looking at it, guys. There is, I'm not making it up. I'm looking at your strategic hacks which are your way of hacking us. There's no way you guys didn't know exactly what you were doing here. Because right here, you have a separate section that again should be appropriately spaced, and it's not. And it's lined up, oh, actually, the inverse of what is going on with the PVC agreement for Amazon. I know exactly what this means, and it's completely unacceptable. It's completely unacceptable. What made you think that you could take the Charlotte? I've been reporting for four years on how people that claim to be involved with things that connect to cybersecurity, connected to app development, connected to industrial technologies responsible for inspection, including of energy facilities up to and including, by the way, nuclear facilities including people allegedly involved in securities brokering, large-scale securities brokering, high, high-risk securities brokering, intentionally create these hacks in the official documentation and refuse to allow you to negotiate. There's no way for you to contact them and make a, a suggestion or alter the contract. And you've been doing it for years. 
This is not acceptable. You are not allowed to sabotage the government accounting office so that you can back in code some sort of default to trigger an infiltration of somebody when they're using electronic devices to steal their data, to mine their data, so that then you can repurpose and repackage it for sale. For matters that are not only not about national security, but are absolutely 100% sabotage of national security. That's exactly what this is.